In today's lesson, we're going to talk about thermodynamic cycles and how to calculate the work done by various types of cycles. So the cycles we're looking at today are not based on cycles we would observe in nature, but they do help us learn how to calculate the work done by cycles that contain various thermodynamic processes. And what we'll do in later videos is we'll cover the Carnot cycle and the Otto cycles. And these cycles also undergo some of the same thermodynamic processes. So in our first example, we're gonna start with the most basic thermodynamic cycle. And this is a rectangular cycle. So a thermodynamic cycle is a series of processes where you start off in one state, for example, state one here, with a particular volume and pressure, and we move in a cycle where we end up in the same place that we started. And this makes this a cyclical process. And cyclical processes can move clockwise or counterclockwise on a PV diagram. So we've covered thermodynamic processes in the last couple of lessons. Can you remember the names of the two thermodynamic processes we have here on the PV diagram? Well, we have two processes that occur at constant volume, but either increase or decrease in pressure. So going from state one to state two and state three to state four, we have an isovolumetric or isochoric process. What about when we go from state two to state three and state four back to state one, where the pressure is constant well, these two processes are isobaric processes. Knowing what type of thermodynamic process we're dealing with in a cycle is important if we want to calculate the work done by the cycle. Because work done is simply equal to the area within the cycle. Now, there are two ways we can calculate the work done for this type of cycle. The easy way is to just multiply the difference in pressure by the difference in volume. In other words, finding the area of the rectangle. But we can also sum up the work done by each process individually. So we can write out the total work done by the cycle by summing up the work done by the individual processes here, the four processes. And I've covered how to calculate work done for various thermodynamic processes in previous lessons. So why would we want to do it this way when it seems more complicated? Well, not all cycles are going to be as simple as this. Some cycles will have odd shapes where there's no straightforward formula to calculate the area. So for example, in the case for the Carnot cycle, to calculate the work done here, would have to sum up the work done for each process individually. And we've got two adiabatic processes here and two isothermal processes. So let's calculate the work done for our rectangular cycle. And we're gonna do this by simply calculating the area for a rectangle. So here we've got the differences in the pressure between the highest pressure and the lowest pressure, and we've got the difference in the volume. And the work done for this cycle is equal to 406 joules. But let's also calculate the work done using the second method. And this is important to learn because you'll be tackling more complex cycles like the Carnot cycle I showed you previously. Well, the work done for an isovolumetric process is always zero because the change in pressure does not deform or move the piston in our chamber. So in other words, no work is being done on the outside environment or from the outside environment to our gas or system. So that leaves us with the isobaric process. When we're moving from state two to state three, we're increasing the volume of the gas in our system. And this is a positive change in volume. 
And the work done under this isobaric process is simply the total area under the curve. So the work done will equal the pressure, which is constant multiplied by the change in volume. So the work done between two and three is a positive 608 joules. But with our second isobaric process, the volume change is negative. So when we calculate the work done for this process, we get a negative number, a negative 202 joules. And remember, when a process moves from right to left on a PV diagram, its work is always negative. So the total work done in the cycle is equal to a positive 406 joules, which is the same as our previous answer. Okay, now we're going to tackle a more complicated cycle involving an adiabatic process. So on our PV diagram, we have three thermodynamic processes. From one to two, we have an isochoric or isovolumetric process. From two to three is an adiabatic process. And from three to one is an isobaric process. And these blue lines here are isotherms, which represents states of constant temperature. So these curves higher up on the diagram represent higher absolute temperatures. We can see here that our adiabatic process causes the gas in our system to drop in temperature, and it does so as the gas expands. And this should make sense because no heat can enter the gas during this process. Now the change in volume and the change in pressure throughout this cycle is the same as the previous example. But we need to add a few more details here, which will become apparent shortly. So we're working with one mole of ideal gas and its temperature at state one is 24 Kelvin. So notice again that this cycle moves in a clockwise direction. This means work done by the gas in our system will be positive and we'll try to work out how much heat was transferred to the ideal gas during this cycle as well. So where do we start here? Well, we simply need to find this enclosed area and we can do this by finding the area under the adiabatic process and subtract the work done by the isobaric process. And we're subtracting here because the change in volume is negative. The gas will shrink in volume. In a previous lesson, I showed that the work done under an adiabatic curve is explained with this equation, but it's probably more intuitive to write it like this. And what I've done here is I've flipped the initial temperature and the final temperature around and added a negative sign outside the bracket. This means that an increase in the temperature will have a positive sign here. Anyway, we know that the total work done in a cycle is the sum of the work done by each process. An isovolumetric process doesn't do any work. We've got the work for the adiabatic process and for the isobaric process, but we face a slight hurdle here. How do we find the temperature at state two and state three for our one mole of ideal gas? Well, luckily, we're given the temperature of the gas at state one. We're also working with a known quantity of ideal gas. So maybe the ideal gas equation can help us out here. We already know the pressure and volume of our gas at state two. So we can rearrange to find the temperature. If we plug in all our values here, the temperature at state two comes out at 73.2 Kelvin. Now this is an increase in temperature from state one, and this should make sense because we're working with the same volume of gas 
but its pressure has increased. Pressure will only increase if the average kinetic energy of the particles have also increased. So let's use the same process now with state 3. So again we're plugging in the values for the pressure and the volume at state 3 and we get a temperature of 48.6 Kelvin. For our adiabatic process, our change in temperature is negative 24.5 Kelvin. And remember, this is a change in temperature, not the temperature itself. So our gas drops in temperature by 24.5 Kelvin during the adiabatic process. So now we can work out the total work done for this thermodynamic cycle and we get a value of a positive 104 joules and remember it's positive because the cycle is moving in a clockwise direction. So because the change in internal energy for a cyclical process is equal to zero and this is because the gas, the state of the gas goes back to its original state after completing one cycle, we can conclude that the heat transferred to the gas is also equal to 104 joules. And we can see this here from the first law of thermodynamics. So finally, we're going to look at a cycle with an isothermic process. In an isothermic process, the temperature of the gas remains constant. Now again, we have a thermodynamic cycle here going from state one to state three, and we're moving in a clockwise direction, meaning that the work done is positive. Also, the total work done during this cycle is also equal to the sum of the work done by each process. We know from a previous example in this lesson that the work done from state one to state two is equal to zero because it's an isovolumetric process. And from state three to state one, we have an isobaric process. So the work done is going to be equal to the pressure multiplied by the change in volume. And we can expect negative work to be done here because the change in volume is negative. So what about the work done for the isothermal process? Well, in one of the last lessons, we worked out what the equation is for an isothermal curve if our system is made up of an idle gas. And for every closed system, the number of moles, the universal gas constant and the temperature will remain constant for an isothermal process. But if we integrate this equation between two points on a curve, we can find the area beneath it. And this will give us the work done for this process. So after we've integrated, the work done will equal this formula here. Where we have the number of moles of gas, the universal gas constant, the temperature of the gas, and the natural logarithm of the fraction of the gas's final volume divided by its initial volume. Now, like the last example, we need to find the temperature of this isotherm. We can do this in one of two ways. We can either use the pressure and the volume of the gas at state three, or the pressure and volume of the gas at state two. It doesn't matter here, because the gas from state two to state three doesn't change in temperature. It's an isothermal process. Let's say we're working with one mole of gas, of ideal gas, and we want to find the temperature at state three. So here on our PV diagram, we've got the pressure and the volume of our gas. We can rearrange this equation to make the temperature the subject, Plug in our values here and we get a temperature 
of 48.6 Kelvin. So this means we can work out the total work done by this cycle now by plugging in all our values. And we get a total work done of 243 joules.